Day three here at Global Bike Fest. It is going to be a busy day. We're starting off with some park laps and we can already tell we're feeling fatigued from the weekend and all the activities. It's been so much fun. After we get some laps in this morning, I've got a KOM hill climb challenge on the road bike that is probably gonna be pretty brutal, especially because my legs are tired. Then after that, probably gonna get some more laps in and follow it up with the Eliminator Finals for the crit race tonight. It's gonna be a good time, so let's get some more laps in and enjoy the rest of the day. We're starting things off back in Leo Gang with some of the features on Hangman Trail. After the features, we're led into some of the most beautiful berms I've ever ridden in my entire life. I'm just gonna be quiet here so that we can enjoy this together. We're headed back to some more sweet features through the woods here at Leo Gang. These drops were designed perfectly and they flowed so well. Nice. Halfway through the day here in Saalbach and it's officially time for me to make my way over to the KOM Hill Climb Challenge. They were supposed to have road racing and mountain bike racing this weekend, but for some reason they canceled all the mountain bike racing events and I still like a little bit of competition in my life. So I thought I would see if a mountain biker could hang with some pretty serious road riders. The course was 1.3 miles for the climb and 900 feet of vertical elevation gain, which is a lot in a very short distance. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the event. I didn't want to wear my GoPro because it was so hot outside. When a GoPro is wrapped around your chest, it just makes you even hotter. And I really needed to be able to breathe on this nasty climb. And then the way the course was designed, it actually ended in a downhill. Even in road riding, I love to crush a good downhill segment. So I just came flying by at the finish line. But because of that, my wife wasn't ready with the camera. Now, of course, there were a whole bunch of other racers out there. So to see how I finished on the KOM Hill Climb Challenge. You'll just have to wait until the awards, which are coming up in just a moment. But before we get to that, I wanna to get to the main event for the weekend, for me at least, the parking garage crit race. For the crit race, they decided on an elimination format 1v1. So heads up racing, three laps for each race. The GMBN Germany crew had a whole bunch of mountain bikers out there. And there was also a few of us on road bikes and I had been getting laps all day in the bike park. So I thought, why not just keep my party laps bike park kit on, full face and everything. And honestly, it was safer for me too. It was really hard to choose what bike was best for the parking garage crit race. The mountain bikes had all the traction in the world especially on this technical course with a ton of tight corners, but it did have a little short climb in it. And lap after lap, that climb really added up and you started feeling it in your legs. So that's where an 18 pound road bike can really play an advantage with less rolling resistance and also quick acceleration out of all those technical corners. So the racing began and in round one, I was facing who I thought might've been my toughest opponent for the day. Another guy who was also on a road bike. Two, one, go! I used my BMX racing background and I knew that meant that I needed to do one thing, protect my inside at all costs. No matter what, do not let anyone get that inside line from you on a corner. Fortunately, that plan worked out for me and I was able to come away out of round one as the winner. For round two, it was my first battle against the GMBN presenter. And I knew that with these mountain bikes, corner grip was way better than the grip I had on my road bike and that I really needed to hug the inside. Even if it meant a slow, bad line through the corner, I just had to protect the inside. And you can see it paid off here because he was coming hard for my inside, but I made the block and I was able to take it from there and accelerate quickly out of the corner. Both rounds one and two were decided pretty quickly by the first few corners that I would likely be the clear victor. For the third and final round, I knew my work would be cut out for me. Racing against Max, a presenter, he had been tearing it up on the course on his mountain bike all day long. The racers and the organizers all noticed that there was a clear advantage at the start of each race to the person that was on the inside line closest to the wall. 
So they decided for the championship race that we were gonna do it Le Mans style, where we had to start off of our bikes, run to our bikes, and then head to the next corner and race our three laps around the course. I realized that there was two different strategies you could utilize here. I made the decision on what I wanted to do, my opponent had made his, and fortunately, I wasn't surprised when my opponent did this. Instead of panicking when Max ran with his bike to the first corner, I wasn't surprised I had expected it. However, I didn't expect it was gonna work out like it did. As soon as we went around the corner where you can't quite see anymore, Max went to jump onto his bike and he accidentally hit his dropper post remote. So his seat raised and in addition to that, when he went to jump on, he actually caught his foot on my front wheel because we were so close together trying to battle to stay in front of each other. <laughs> but I knew he was gonna be right there the whole time throughout the race. And sure enough, corner after corner, he was right on my tail. I had a ton of sketchy moments trying not to slide out on the slippery surface, especially as I would come around to get the on-ramp again to head back upstairs. It was just so slick right there, I almost lost it multiple times. I kept my head down, I kept charging hard up that hill, and I was able to keep just enough distance from Max, and I was able to come away with the win. So with racing complete for the the day it was time for the award ceremony by the way did i mention that it was my birthday and over on the KOM challenge we saw some riders take on a pretty epic climb and we had some seriously impressive times so our first result for KOM fastest male rider okay oh i feel that tension oh. amazing it's ivan reed in 1351 there's a bit already for the world tour and I tell you what, Ivan here, we've already met just earlier on. Look at that award, but I think he gets the award for it. He rode in this garb all day. It's also <laughs> his birthday. <laughs> earlier in the day, during other festivities, Martin from GMBN had complimented my party lap shirt. And while doing so, Amy, my wife, had stepped in to tell him how it was actually my birthday. So naturally, when I was given my award, Martin quickly informed everybody there and they kindly wished me a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ivan. Happy birthday to you. Love it. Needless to say, it was one heck of a way to turn another year older. With my KOM challenge win under my belt, well, there was still one more visit to the stage. In the car park criterium winner, wait, I don't need a script for this. I actually know who the winner is. This is brilliant. We, I knew we didn't need a script. Who, who, the winner, he's right there. He's dressed for winning. It's his birthday. <laughs> 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 I thought the other thing was the thing you won. You just can't stop it. <laughs> We've got to try and look cool next to you. So I was the mountain biker that showed up to Global Bike Fest and ended up coming away with the wins for both categories that you could win, which traditionally are road bike categories. I was pretty proud of myself for that. Had an awesome weekend and I actually ended up winning a GCN kit, which was valued at like 180 bucks. So that's pretty sweet to have that too. And all in all, it was a great weekend. We got a super long drive home now, five and a half hours back to Italy and it is 7.45. So it looks like we're probably getting home at 2 a.m. or something. We still need dinner. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell me where to ride next.